Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Magazine and Yelp. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue Media. In life and in the restaurant business, we learn through lessons and stories. Today, we have Doghouse co-founder Andre Veneer. Andre, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. So we are recording at MirTech Conference, multi-unit restaurant technology conference at the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. There are incredible brands all across the board for three days here in Las Vegas. I looked at the entire schedule, and when I saw Doghouse, I have not been to the Doghouse in San Diego, but I have seen the content that you guys are creating online, the story, the impact that you're making, and everything that you guys are doing is why we created this show. We're very excited to have you on. Thank you for being here. Awesome. Thanks for those words and uh, excited to be here as well. Where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? Well, uh, we were found in Pasadena, Doghouse, and I'd have to say the first venue that we went into officially with Doghouse was the Rose Bowl. Really? So, America's Stadium, pretty awesome. They've, they've been there for 75 years. They never had an outside food vendor have a brick and mortar inside there, and they called us up and they said, hey, you're the hometown heroes, we'd love to have you here. So um, we were the first ones to go in there and then they realized the sales went up you know, from their normal concessions just by having a, a, you know, a, a brand that people know. So the following year they changed all their concession stands into other restaurants. Amazing. And so now the Rose Bowl when you go there has all concession stands of different brands. So kind of cool, uh, love going to that, that uh, stadium and it's a tradition to go there always on the Rose Bowl game. So. Beautiful. So hypothetically, let's pretend that I convince Entrepreneur and convince Yelp and Toast um, to put on a hospitality conference. We're going to fill the entire Rose Bowl with just people that are playing the game within the game. People that really care deep and passionate about hospitality. And I'm going to put you on the 50 yard line. I'm going to give you a mic and I'm going to give you 120 seconds to tell me who you are and what is the Doghouse brand story. Can you give me that? Sure. I mean, Doghouse was created here in the Rose Bowl. Pasadena at the 50 yard line. Uh, no, we started three buddies in 2010. Uh, the brand was created just to have fun and and try to try to give the quality food of you know like of a hot dog. Hot dogs back in the day was always like the cheap leftover kind of meat. We wanted to have the gold standard of, of what a hot dog would be. So we created this brand um, and put all the best ingredients and try to like have some fun with it, right? So a lot of our names have uh, creative names on it, like, you know, Reservoir Hog or Ch Chachi. Or <laughs> Reservoir Hog, so oh, we that's, that's right after my heart. Quentin yeah, Tarantino so we, uh, you know, it. we have a little bit of fun, but all kidding aside, um, we're not, you know, we're, we're not uh, saving lives or anything. We're making burgers and fries and dogs and, and trying to have a place where people could come into that feel part of the community that just gets away, gets you um, away from all that noise out there. And just, you come in there, you have a good time, you have some amazing food. And when I think, obviously you've seen it, when you look at the food, it's just something that's different. It's just amazing. We use everything, uh, everything's put on King's Hawaiian bread. That's uh, how we create everything, from the burgers, to the sliders, to the dogs, to the chicken sandwiches. And uh, we try to have that sweet, savory um, recipe that's a success. And, uh, you know, today we, uh, we're in, uh, we have over 50 locations, plus uh, lots of venues as well, and we're in 15 states, and just want to continue to grow and grow and grow. And so, just excited that three uh, three guys got together and you know created a hot dog shop, and now it's a it's a nationally known brand. I love it. Yeah, I mean, one of the coolest things that we get to see here at this conference at Miratech, but you know, also just in the hospitality space, is people that are starting to understand that the way that we think of restaurants isn't the traditional model anymore. No. We have to change as owner operators, as people that are creating these brands that we can't discriminate how people get great food. And you guys have described yourself as craft casual. Yeah. Can you explain what that means? Well, I came up with that word craft casual because we're, you know, there's the QSR space and there's the fast casual space. And, you know, we I wouldn't say we're fast, right? <laughs> you come into our place, you get a dog, a chicken sandwich, plant-based impossible burger it's gonna take 10, 12 minutes to make. So to be in a category called fast casual, I was like, okay, let's cross off that word and call craft casual, because mm -hmm. everything's, the, our cocktails are, you know, craft cocktails, our food's, you know, made to order, everything's uh, fresh, so it takes a little bit of time. So I'm like, hey, 
we have to be like labeled into these two, um, either this or either that. And so we just came up with the word craft casual. And I think, uh, uh, I think the first time we ever did that was maybe like eight, nine years ago with Entrepreneur Magazine. That's amazing. Yeah. That's very cool. Well, here we are again with Entrepreneur Magazine. There you go. Sharing the, the, new, the new brand moving forward, where you guys have taken it. Because I think it's, it's super interesting to, to think about, especially the way that you guys describe yourself. When I do my, my due diligence and digital deep dive into who is Doghouse and what are you guys building, so much of what you guys are building are the things that we talk about on this podcast, something that our brand, Cali Barbecue, is trying to do, to be the Amazon of barbecue, slow mm -hmm. food fast, mm -hmm. understanding that we're not going to open up brick-and-mortar restaurants the way that we used to open up brick-and-mortar restaurants. Yes. We're going to go into ghost kitchens. We're going to call them friendly ghost kitchens because we're going to share the brand story. We're going to go into stadiums. We're going to make partnerships with people for distribution mm -hmm. because we need to get great food to where people are. Yep. Why is it so important for you to partner with Live Nation and to get your brand out into these ghost kitchen markets? So I'll answer two parts. Uh, Live Nation, the reason why we're with them, well, A, they came up to us after the success story of the Rose Bowl. Um, so they came up to us to say, hey, we'd love to have you and all the, we heard about the news from the Rose Bowl operating company that the sales went up that high. So we want to convert our Live Nation stands, try to get what people want, you know, a premium product, um, you know, uh, our, our, our meats are hormone-free, antibiotic-free, never ever. So a clean product, I mean, one of the ways when we changed our dog, originally, this is our, we all have, three partners have kids, um, and our wives are pregnant, and like, can't have a hot dog, you know, there's <laughs> nitrates in it, and it's like, I'm not gonna put that, in. doctor yeah. said no hot dogs, I'm like, that's bullshit, we're gonna change that. So now our dogs, you know, have no added nitrates in them, and so uh, we wanna be, you know, acceptable to, uh, for everybody to have it. So we went into Live Nation because obviously big fans, right? Yeah. I mean, music's so awesome. To be part of those big venues is awesome. Uh, the band, to have the reach of being in all their um, stadiums across the country is just, it's just a fun bragging piece as well. But what's cool is it's that more, it's that many more people are gonna be able to try your food that yeah. would not have tried it. Um, and then obviously as we're in the franchise sales world, we have had and we hope to continue where somebody goes into that stadium and they try it at the Chula Vista Amphitheater yep. and they try a doghouse down there in San Diego and said, this is awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it, how do I get involved in this? They call us all of a sudden now there's five stores in San Diego because they tried it it's, from the live It's amazing. Nation. I literally saw your doghouse when I went to get Pitbull concert with my okay. wife. I saw it. And, but I, I recognized it because of your brand story. Yeah. Because you guys are so consistent in what you do, which is why we put on the show to teach other restaurant owners how important this is to share what you guys are doing online. Yeah. Because your story, it inspires people. It inspires me as a restaurant owner when I go to a venue and I see that you guys are in a venue like that because then I know the things that we're doing to go into Snapdragon Stadium in San Diego right. or Vieja Serena. Yes, it's different. Yes, I didn't think we'd be doing it, but now we're doing it and we're confident in doing it because people like you are. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you're doing it for the marketing. I mean, yes. everybody gets a licensing agreement. You're not going to make millions off of that part. Correct. There's a lot of time and energy put behind <laughs> it. But the reality, we're being here, I yeah, but that. Rea reality is all those people are talking about it. Um, all those people are going there trying the product. You know, it's just spreading spreading the word about your brand. And so for us, it's really important um, to partner with Live Nation. And then, um, you know, to your other part of the question, the ghost kitchens, yeah. that's a whole nother uh, direction to go into. Because well, tell me about it. So ghost kitchens is something that I think a lot of brands, uh, if you're a small company, you might use a ghost kitchen to like, just use it as a kind of test kitchen yep. and, and go through some reps. There's not a lot of people who are really, really small brands that kind of stay for too long there. There's a couple that break through, but it's a good way to kind of kick off a brand or kind of test a few things, test the market. When you're in a mid-sized market like uh, a brand like us, then we could use it to go into new locations like CapEx, right? Yep. You could open a ghost kitchen for $100,000. You could yep. sign a lease for a year. Yep. Something goes wrong. That's it. It's That's not right. a 10 year lease. It's not a three, you know, $700,000 build out of a brick and mortar. So it's a nice way to, um, to prime the market. If you're about to open, uh, a, a, a restaurant. So I'll use an example in, in Austin, we have a, we have a 
brick and mortar lease sign, building it from the ground up, takes 18 months. So they go ahead and start a ghost kitchen there ahead of time, get the marketing buzz out there, prime the market, have people start ordering it. Now they're used to it. Now it's kind of like the coming soon. Yes. I guess you could say back in the day, you might even get a food truck and park it yeah. at your brick and, brick and mortar while you're doing construction to get the hype going. So it's a way to prime the market. It's also a way to test the market. So like we'll go to San Francisco, open a ghost kitchen. We're like, San Francisco even wants somebody like us. Yeah. They want a national brand because when I lived in San Francisco, I lived in North Beach and it's like, there's no chains allowed. Yeah. So it was a good way to go up there to test like, will this fit in a, in a market like, like San Francisco or San Diego where they want their hometown heroes like Sam the cooking guy, <laughs> not, not tacos, right? Like, is that something? Sam the cooking guy, he's the OG. He's the first, first podcast episode we did with Sam. That guy is one badass guy. He, he is a restaurant influencer, yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, but I mean, you wanna test it out and see if you could fit in there. So, uh, ghost kitchens are great for that. For the big guys, uh, let's say a Chick-fil-A, it's a great, you know, it's a valve, right? Chick-fil-A has no time, no room to have, to be able to have uh, catering yep. out of the kitchen or delivery pickups. I mean, they're already busy. So what they do is they get a ghost kitchen nearby as a relief valve. Yep. And then that's, that's where all the food comes for the third party. It yep. never comes from that store that you think it's coming to. It's coming from there. So um, we uh, got into the ghost kitchen scene pre-pandemic. And uh, what we realize is our size of a company is, you know, let's say we go in Chicago, isn't big enough to support a ghost kitchen by itself. Um, you know, and what we did is we came up with these things called virtual brands. And so we created other brands using our same kitchen equipment, using the same product mix, mm -hmm. and just using the marketing department to come up with something new. So we launched uh, five brands um, out of that same kitchen and um, we launched Badass Breakfast Burrito, Bad Mother Clucker, Plant B, Impossible Shop, Jailbird Wings, and, um, and Big Belly Burgers. And so what we did is we launched that for the ghost kitchens, created that mm -hmm. so that we'd have enough sales to um, you know, cover the cost of that ghost kitchen. And then uh, when the pandemic happened in 2020, yep. in March, after uh, about a month of hiding under the couch, drinking my bottles of liquor every night, <laughs> going, going, what just happened? Yeah, what 50 just happened? restaurants just what, shut down overnight. What just happened? And I only have 12 bottles of liquor at home. <laughs> I'm screwed. So, um, no, once we, uh, once we realized, let's, let's, let's address this problem, we went to all the franchisees and said, hey, listen, we've got these virtual brands. They're made for ghost kitchens only, but you guys want to give it a chance? You could you could now do these virtual brands out of your back door of your kitchen. Yep. So we're not going to change the menu, we're not going to change the vibe, but you could have this for delivery. And because of that, within 60 days, we had um, our five virtual brands, at that time, sorry, three virtual brands launched, and we were had higher same store sales in June of 2020 with our bars shut down than we did prior to the pandemic. So um, because of that, kind of like quick reaction and everyone gambling. Um, that's why uh, we're here, I guess, and growing. Um, to date from the pandemic till today, we're up 34% and we're just now opening the bars fully. So kind of got lucky, but- yes. uh, And we're um, doing alcohol to go, right? Uh, we were doing alcohol to go in a lot of states. Um, some states didn't. So that's part of the interesting challenge of a franchise company is you let the franchisee know their market yep. and so, in Wyoming, I mean, booze going out the door. Other places are like, I don't want to deal with the ABC here yeah. in LA. It's not worth it. Or yeah. something. And now for a quick break from our show, we want to welcome the newest sponsor to restaurant influencers, and that is Pop Menu. You know how obsessed we are with digital hospitality on this show. You know how obsessed we are with smartphone storytelling. We were so excited to welcome Pop Menu because they have an incredible suite of tools to help you with your online ordering and your digital experience for the brand of your business. Pop Menu also has a credible tool called Pop Menu Answering. Not answering your phone is one of the quickest ways for your restaurant to lose a potential customer. That's why your restaurant needs Pop Menu Answering. Pop Menu Answering is powered by artificial intelligence to answer the simple questions most people call in with, like, do you have outdoor seating? What are your hours? And with Pop Menu, you can customize your answers, choose the voice your guests hear, and even customize those greetings. 
Plus, Pop Menu's full collection of tools help optimize your website and menu, streamline the ordering experience, and assist in remarketing. Reclaim the power of your phone now with Pop Menu answering. Please visit popmenu.com slash influencers where my listeners can lock in $100 off your first month plus an unchanging monthly rate. Please go to popmenu.com slash influencers. It helps the show. It helps our sponsor. And more importantly, it's going to help your restaurant. Now back to the show. Can you tell us, some, it's great when there's success and obviously anybody can talk to the pandemic and how difficult that was, but where along the line has there been failure that you guys have learned from? Well, the failure part I could say was, was, you know, thinking that we're out of the pandemic because our sales were so high yep. and everything was great. And like, you know, masks are coming off and bars are open and everything is great. Um, but what really hit the world was like the, the um, labor and um, supply chain. Yeah. I mean, today, today, two years later is the worst that it's ever been. And so we thought we're kind of cool and everything's done and let's celebrate and keep opening more stores and keep, you know, uh, growing the brand. And then you realize, shit, we've got two stores in Texas right now are completely built, but they can't open because they can't find enough staff. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a, that's a little problem. Uh, and then the other thing is the supply chain. I mean, who would have known you, you know, you can't get tater tots yeah. something that doesn't even make I, sense that I, you can't, I understand, I understand some of the, or onion rings. Yeah. These, or chicken wings <laughs> or, chicken or wings. bacon's or not bacon, allowed yeah, in California right. anymore. Yeah. All the new rules. So it's yeah. like, that this is the tough time now is to, um, to deal with that. And I think, uh, you know, you only have so many points in a restaurant. And if right now for us, 53% of our, our sales are off premise. Yeah. And if you have these third party providers that I'm not going to talk shit about because w if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be where we are today. Yep. But there's only so many points to take. And if you throw in now minimum wage doubling, if you throw in supply chain issues and you throw in DSP fees, you know, we have to really fight. So I'd say um, not one of our problems, but to just kind of think that this uh, was all over yeah. when it's, I feel like it's just beginning. What advice do you have for restaurant owners about branding and marketing? Branding is everything. Um, I think, I think f first you got to know your brand and, you know, put all your attention to figure out who you are and just brand, 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 brand. <laughs> Whether it's swag, whether it's it's TikTok, whether it's it's old-fashioned PR, um, you got to get the brand out there. And once it's out there, then you can have fun with the marketing, using all the technology tools to do marketing to to um, spread the awareness. But I'd say our one thing, if we know how to do right, besides create amazing food, is the branding part. Yeah. Marketing part, we're still learning. You know, every well, single day, learning. every single Everybody's day, it's Anyone brand that new. says they know marketing is full of shit. But I could tell you, I could tell you, our brand, we know who we are and yeah. we know what we want people to see. We want to have fun. We want to like, you know, you walk into our place as we love wieners. Like you got to just break, you know, <laughs> just got to just throw a little, you know, say, hey, we're here to have fun. We're not here to like, this isn't like a serious process. This is yeah. you're coming here to have a burger and a beer and and have a good time. So we're here at the Mirror Tech Conference. Technology is part of who our brand is, Cali Barbecue. Toast believed in this show. They believed in sharing these restaurant influencer stories. So many of the people that we've had on, not everyone has Toast, but a lot of the people do have Toast. You told we, me that you switched. We just switched to Toast. I think they're the cutting edge for POS. Um, they're very user friendly. We have a lot of franchisees. We have a lot of training. Um, so it's a very friendly process uh, to work with. They also integrate with a lot of the, you know, all the tech people who are out here. So I think that's a really important part. Back uh, three years ago, you talk about POSs and um, you deal with these things called tech stacks and let us try to get this company to speak to this company to speak to this company. And you could build this tech stack for this much money or we think we have a plan in Q3. All this stuff was just a disaster. And Toast is one of those companies who um, made it easy for the user and also uh, made it very easy to work with um, other platforms. So we talk a lot about a new era of hospitality. We talk about digital hospitality. How does Doghouse embrace the world that we live in now? Hey, it's, it's, a, it's a hard one. I mean, for us, the word hospitality for 53% of off-premise is a very tough thing. And we, you, once it leaves, 
your place, you know, it's in somebody else's hand. And so how do you give that customer service? What happens if there's something missing? How do you like say, oh, let me take care of that, or this one's on me, or let me get you a beer, or touch the table. So we've tried to think outside of the box on how to be able to give hospitality. Uh, so the first thing is make sure we're delivering products that travel well, right? So if this item doesn't travel well, take it off the delivery menu, even though it's one of the most popular yeah. items in the restaurant. Okay, you can't get rid of French fries, but hey, tots hold a lot better than fries. So we're promoting our tots, yep. add a tots, combo meals with tots, not necessarily fries. And then a little note inside, hey, hope you enjoy this meal. I can't wait to you know have you try this meal in our store with a beer. Looking forward to having you here. But meanwhile, if um, you know you'd like to reheat your tots or make them warmer, we recommend doing this on a skillet for for just three minutes. Flash fry the tots and try to teach them. Don't eat the cold. Hey, I'll try that for fun. Three minutes now. I got some warm tots and crispy, just like in the store. They're not microwaved and soggy, and they're not cold. So kind of do that and just like little notes that we drop inside the bags and say, hey. Um, hope you enjoyed the experience. Look forward to seeing you. Hey, why don't you try some of our other brands? If you like this, wait till you try Bad Mother Clucker and Badass Breakfast Burrito. So there's never a great time to open up a new business, open up a new restaurant. There's probably never a great time to start a family, to have a kid. Sometimes all of these things in life happen at the times that they happen. What kind of advice? Are you saying like I had my kid on the, the day I opened my <laughs> first doghouse? Is that what you're talking about? No, I had no <laughs> idea, but that's not surprising to yeah, me. Yeah, I think the no between way. the three tell partners, me, tell me the story. I don't even know. I who, need to who, hear it. I don't know who, who was on first and second and third, but I think we Come had on. two babies, a marriage, an engagement, all this stuff, all within like 30 days of opening a first doghouse. So it was definitely something that was, it was, uh, a crazy time. Yeah, we opened our first doghouse October uh, 20th, 2010. My kid was born um, and uh, uh, my wife got pregnant. Uh, Hago got married and Cosm had his baby and it was just all right there. We're like, you can't plan it. You can't, no. you can't make this shit up. Yes. So, um, no, t timing is, the timing is your, an opportunity yes. is when we take, is when we go for it. So, sure, you could say right now is not a great time or you could say right now is an excellent time because unfortunately there's 50% of restaurants went under, and, and right now it's the first time ever in the history where it's a it's a renter's market. It's not the landlord's in charge. You could negotiate your TI, your rent abatement. Yep. You could ask for a bunch of things right now, and you could even make lease leases that are in, in your favor. And it's really uh, right now we we have uh, 18 in construction, and we're signing two three leases a month right now. So it's That's it's something. Incredible. So there is an opportunity. Kitchen United came along. Um, we didn't know what a ghost kitchen was, and so we said, let's just try it. Let's, we were the first people in the first uh, ghost kitchen, and, and we worked with um, over at Cloud Kitchen as well and went to their Hollywood location. So wow. sometimes you just got to say, let's try it. It's not really in your control. Yeah. Um, but I'd say opportunities are the reasons why you should start the restaurant or gut instinct. How do you feel about mentorship? Have you had anybody that's been in your corner that's helped you navigate the, the worlds of, of being in business? I'll say two things. Uh, one, to go how you first started today, uh, partnerships is everything. I think our, our brand is only successful because of its partners. Um, we've really put a lot of time at working with our partners to uh, grow our brand and they've had our backs and we've had their backs. So I think that's a key part. You know. We treat our employees um, with a lot of respect. We have no turnover. It's one of the things that's uh, very unusual for us. It's hard to start, like I said, to find, open a new store, to find the new staff. Yeah. But we've been able to keep our staff. So you take care of your people and you take care of your partners. I think that's important. But mentors, uh, answering your question, that's uh, another reason why um, we've done well. Uh, Rick and Elise Wetzel, uh, they founded Wetzel's Pretzels and Blaze Pizza. Uh, they're one of the coolest couples out there that understand the game and from day one they're rooting for us. They're awesome. another Pasadena family. So we're mm -hmm. in Pasadena. Another Pasadena uh, good partner and mentor and friend, Michael Montagno from Kitchen United. We share the same block for our offices. Nice. You know, that, that's been a great relationship. Bill Phelps, uh, who is also with uh, Wetzel's, um, he now is with uh, Dave's, Dave's Hot Chicken. Mm -hmm blowing that up, probably Huge. fastest growing brand out there. Another guy lives in Pasadena. So having those mentors, um, we got uh, an investor 
uh, four years ago. Her name is Jan Reese. And so um, besides the three guys, uh, she came in the company as a partner and she's been running for 25 years uh, Subway Worldwide. So she's oh, wow. in charge of 47,000. 47,000? Figuring out how to get the bread here, how to deal with that PR issue. How to, so she's our friend and mentor. Um, Jeff Chandler from Hop Dotty, Bill Allen, all great guys. Um, so to have the mentor group, I think is the most important. And I can tell you, I've paid it back as now I'm starting to mentor a lot of people who've, hey, I want to get into franchising. Hey, I want to buy my first restaurant. Hey, we only, we only have three locations. How do we get to the next level? Yeah. Can you tell me about this? I'll tell you this, I'm not good at responding in a timely fashion, that's my weakness, <laughs> but I can promise you I help people all the time grow their business mm -hmm. because if it weren't for my mentors, we'd be dead in the water. And so now when people are like, hey, I want a franchise, how do I do it? Four of my $50,000 FDD agreement say, here it is. Amazing. Here's all the work we did. Look at it, call me if you have any questions. Uh, just, we're all here to try to make it, you know, yeah. and uh, help each other. Oh, we believe a rising tide lifts all ships. We're grateful that you guys listen to the podcast, that you watch it on YouTube, follow us on social. Uh, you can always reach out to me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. Uh, if you want to reach out to the show, Sean at CaliBBQ.media. Doghouse, Andre, uh, you, you guys, I mean, I have nothing but standing ovation for the work that you're doing. I mean, it's truly, it's truly inspirational. I'm grateful that we have this platform that we can share your story and watch you guys continue to grow. Um, where, where's the best digital playground for people to reach out to you and, and the brand? We'll put links in the show notes for all. Yeah, I mean, doghouse.com. You could you could find us that way, and um, you know, a, you know, the, our e emails are all of our first names at the place at doghouse.com. So very accessible. We're there to help anybody. Uh, love love what you're doing. Rooting for you as well. Appreciate that. Um, that's awesome that you you know started something you know, from nothing, now I have all these sponsors and I could already tell you've got the vision for the, what's the next thing and how do you grow and how do you grow? So yeah. that's pretty badass what you're doing. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, just the, appreciate what you're doing and spreading word for Doghouse. Now the only thing I ask you is that I'll give you 30 days <laughs> To go 30 try days, so our, our team is going to make sure, today. No, we're, we're included with this podcast episode, we're going to get a bunch of B-roll at the San Diego Doghouse. There you go. Guaranteed 100%. Yeah. Um, as always, stay curious, get involved, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, please share the episode with somebody if, uh, if you're inspired, and we'll catch you guys next week. Thank you. If you are looking to improve your digital hospitality and you would like to learn more about what Toast has done for many of the guests on this show, like Sam the Cooking Guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Matt Horn, they all have trusted Toast to be their primary technology partner, just like we did at Cali Barbecue. When we struggled with online ordering during the pandemic, we knew that we needed to switch from Aloha to Toast. Toast helped us with online ordering. They helped us with loyalty. They helped us with gift cards. Guests can order food when they want on their terms and they can pay from the table. If you want to learn more, DM me at Sean P. Walchef on any social platform and I will get you in touch with the right people at Toast to help scale your restaurant brand.